Hey, this is Sartre with Mythic MTG Tech doing a deck tech here today on Tassiger. I've got a special guest, uh, David here, who plays a lot of competitive uh, commander at uh, Card Kingdom here in Seattle. Um, can you introduce to us the deck, how it works, how how strong you think it is, um, and then we're just going to run through the deck overall. Tell us a little bit about this deck. Well, sure thing. Um, well, the commander is Tassiger. The Golden Fang, what he is, is a 6-drop for 4-5 that you can delve to make him a 1-drop, essentially. Uh, in a graveyard-centric deck, you can essentially come out turn 2 or 3, and then you can start abusing an ability, which is pay 4 mana, mill yourself 2, and then an opponent takes uh, chooses a non-land, and you can put that into your hand. So what we do in this deck is so we get infinite mana using Brexing Delver. Dead Eye Navigator, and Palancron, and the Phyrexian Delver is completely optional. However, he has an ability, when he enters, um, you can essentially reanimate another creature. So if you have all three in the yard, you reanimate the Delver, which gets back to Dead Eye, you blink the Dead Eye, get Palancron, and then still bond them for infinite mana. Use Tassiger's ability, put your entire deck in your hand, play a Laboratory Maniac, and then play anything that draws a card. So essentially, so you basically okay. say this is a casual deck that wins very slowly, right? Yeah, it, it shouldn't win until like turn two or three. I think okay. it's pretty casual. Excellent, we got it. So what are some of the best cards in this deck? Okay, so absolutely number one best card in the deck is Bazaar of Baghdad. It's a draw two, discard three on a land, so you can abuse it over and over, and allows you to put broken, reanimated stuff like Jenga Taxis in the yard, and then reanimate him. And now your opponents don't have a hand, and you can win pretty easily. So why is Reanimate your favorite of the Reanimate spells? I mean, uh, doesn't that, like, hurt you or something? Like, Because life total doesn't really matter in competitive EDH. You use it more of as a research uh, resource rather than anything else. So you try to cheat them out, turn two or three, and then keep stuff up like Force of Will, Counter It, Swan Song if you have mana open. Or Mental Misstep if they have like a Swords of Plowshares or whatever. So Mental Misstep, a lot of people say that's rubbish in EDH. Why are you playing it? Because um, a lot of the stuff that hurts the deck and kind of better in more competitive formats uh, is uh, like Soul Ring, Vamp Tutor, Reanimate, uh, Enlightened Tutor, Swords of Plowshares, Path to Exile, all those kind of low CMC but powerful spells that can come down early. This just counters them for a meager two life. And... It's not uncommon for people to keep a hand with one land and a soul ring, and then you, they just lose to that. Excellent. Now, you make a really good point. Soul ring is one of the most overpowered cards in the whole format. That's great. If good. you can just shut that down on turn one, it is well <laughs> worth it. Um, so you've got a few green cards there in your top uh, cards. Um, what have you got there that's green? Um, Survival of the Fittest. Um, I don't think I need to explain why this is good in Reanimator. Essentially, discarding any creature to search up any creature is borderline insane and can set up combo very quickly. Um, using that, I like to survive away Jenga Taxis and get Sylvan Safekeeper, which is a one drop for green. Sacrifice a land, target creature gets Shroud. So you drop him, they try to kill your reanimation target, you sack a land, they lose their hand, and the game's over. And another great one is Carpet of Flowers, which is another one that very few people play. It essentially is a uh, third, uh, Mana Crypt is a second, Soul Ring, that um, nets you mana for every island your opponents have, which it can essentially get you two or three mana by turn three, and you can even hard cast some of your reanimation targets. I think that is one of the best pieces of tech in this deck that most people have never heard of. It's like it is often much more powerful than even a soul ring. Like most people don't have the enchantment removal, and I've seen it uh, garner three or four extra mana every turn. Just incredible. Um, so, what are your best? Uh, so you mentioned survival of the fittest, incredible tutor. Um, what's some of the other stuff that you've got in the tutor package uh, that works really well? Well, clearly every black deck runs demonic tutor. Um, every reanimation deck runs in Tomb, and a lot of the other ones are just more fringe stuff. I run a Dark Petition, because it's not uncommon to get Spell Mastery super early. Chain Impact here is essentially another tutor, however, it also combos well with Laboratory Maniac when you would just want to end the game. And uh, what Chain Impact does is you exile the next card in your library, and you may put it into your hand, or, or you can keep exiling next cards unless you uh, run into a card with a similar name to a card you already exiled. However, we only run one of each basic, so we never run into that problem. 
So essentially, you get Chain of Packs, Lab Man, exile your whole library, or take the last one, it doesn't matter, and then draw a card using Bazaar, Cephalocalcium, Brainstorm, and the game's over. Excellent. Very, very nice there. Um, so what what else have you got for control here to kind of keep the combo alive? Well, we run a very low CMC counter package, so stuff like Dispel is uh, valued more than uh, two mana counters. Muddle is a two mana counter, but it can transmute to get me reanimation or demonic tutor if I really need to find anything else. Misdirection is basically a second force of will, since most of the stuff is uh, targeted removal, so they have a sorts of plowshares, you misdirection it onto your birds of paradise or anything that doesn't really matter. And mana drain is just insane. Mana drain is incredible. Massive ramp, counter somebody else's combo, and then go off the next wow. turn. Yeah. Um, so let's look through the deck. Um, what have you got in here for draw um, to just really make sure you get into the combo or to go off a second time if you've been stopped the first time? Well, some of the best cards are uh, Careful Study and uh, Jace and Frantic Search. What they do is they allow me to draw and discard cards. So if I have a fatty in hand, I can get rid of it early and reanimate it shortly after. Also, I run Brainstorm, Ponder, and Preordain just to... Give me a uh, extra draw early on and get me into a different combo if needed. Now, now when you say Jace, you're not talking about Mind Sculptor. No. Uh, baby Jace, Flippy Jace, whatever you want to call him. Um, two mana, draw, and discard is really good. And then he flips over so you can play the reanimation spells or whatever you need to from your graveyard. Often you can reanimate with him and then use his minus three to target a counter spell in your graveyard so you can go off more safely. Yeah, in competitive EDH... The, the mini Jace is much better um, than Jace the Mind Sculptor, and in this deck, it's just perfect. Like, this is the deck it wants to be in. Um, let's see, what have you got for ramp, and how important is ramp in this deck? Um, you're running a really uh, low CMC total. Well, on average, our CMC stops around three, so we have stuff like Birds of Paradise, Death Rite, Shaman... Uh, Soul Ring, Mana Crypt, Mox Diamond, and uh, Chrome Mox as the only ramp stuff, because essentially once you get to 3 mana, you can cast 90% of the spells in the deck, and then you can safely reanimate and have counter back up by that point. So, right. turn and, 2. And when playing competitively, that means that you're winning turn 2, not turn 3 or turn 4. Uh, it, the, the ramp is well worth it. Um, what have you got here for removal? What if other people get things out, like... Scavenging ooze or something just to kind of eat apart your deck slowly. How do you deal with that? Uh, Abrupt Decay is a great card for that because a lot of the threats to the deck are low CMC and of course it can't be countered. Uh, Beast Within kills anything and everything and plus when you get infinite mana you can just bounce this or uh, get this back over and over to Beast Within every permanent on the battlefield, not yours. <laughs> and uh, Nature's Claim gives them four life but kills an artifact or enchantment and life really doesn't matter in competitive EDH so killing their soul ring on turn one and giving them four life is well worth it. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned uh, the Bazaar of Baghdad here. Um, any other utility lands, or is everything else just mana fixing? Uh, not so much. Bazaar is often the one I tutor up if I want to tutor up a land. Orborg is pretty good in any black deck. Um, another one would be Cephalid Coliseum as a one-time Bazaar of Baghdad use. Uh, so you can... Uh, pay blue, and sacrifice it to target a player draws three and discards three. So you can set it up for yourself, or you can have force an opponent to draw three and discard three, and you can draw six off good old uh, Consphinx. Mm -hmm. Consphinx is just incredible, amazing card, especially since you can actually often hard cast it off of the mana drain mana. Um, you've got a Leviathan in here. Tell us about Le Leviathan oh, and why it's in here. Leviathan is so underappreciated, it's ridiculous. So he has an ability. When he enters the battlefield, bounce all non-land permanents that uh, other non-land permanents, so not himself. So why he's great is you can set it up with any enchantment. You reanimate him with Animate Dead or Dance of the Dead. He enters, bounces the Animate Dead or Dance of the Dead, including every other non-land permanent to their owner's hands, meaning you can repeatedly bounce everything over and over again. And with uh, Necromancy, you can soft lock uh, aggro decks or decks with heavy amount of permanence. Since Necromancy can be played at instant speed, you Necromancy in the Cataract Leviathan, bounce the Necromancy back to your hand, and everything else, at the end of their turn, they discard down to seven, and you have this soft lock combo to keep aggro 
at bay or just make it so the board doesn't get too oppressive for you. And you're running so few permanents that you can just recast them early on and even net mana off this. Mm -hmm. And it works very well when you're also reanimating Trastodon. You kill three of the lands, bounce them back to their hand with Leviathan, repeat over and over until they're dead. And you, you've got some awesome utility in here. Um, you've got Stifle, which is another one that I think is heavily underappreciated in EDH. What do you often end up stifling with this deck? Um, usually graveyard removal. Um, I'm actually thinking about taking Stifle out because it's pretty rare. It also stops Gilded Drake or um, like Death Rite Shaman abilities. and uh, mm -hmm. It's also nice to Stifle a turn one fetch land. <laughs> that feels nice. But it probably it does will. feel good. It, it, I've done that a lot in Legacy, and it, it still even feels good at EDM. Probably will be cut. Okay. <laughs> um, so what do you think are kind of the, the top three cards that you haven't talked about already that people would be surprised at that are in this deck? Well, I mentioned... Uh, Carpet of Flowers, and I think that should be in pretty much any green deck with a heavy blue meta. Uh, probably the second best reanimation target is Void Winner. It's what he says is your opponents can't play cards of even mana cost, and they can't block with creatures of even <laughs> mana cost. So it stops uh, Narset, Arkham, Captain Sisse, uh, Brea, a lot of powerful decks that rely on their general. Also, um, getting him out on turn two or three means that they can't really ramp. They can't play a lot of the good counter spells in the format. They can't play many rafts. It stops a lot more than people expect. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I only one, really run one rat, uh, creature wrath, Toxic Deluge. Easily the best wrath in the format, in my opinion. Are you telling me that life does not matter in this not combo? At, not at all. Okay. I've uh, often drained myself down to eight or six life by myself without people attacking me and then can just combo off. Very, very nice. Um, I see that you've got Stubborn Denial in here. Uh, that's a nice new card to be added. What do you think of it? Um, I think it's not great, but in this deck it is because your general is a one mana four or five, so this essentially is another negate for one mana. Nice. Excellent. Um, anything else that you would like to add in about the deck before we close up here? Um, I think it's important for uh, a lot of the reanimation decks I see around are uh, focused on uh, quantity rather than quality, like focusing on stuff like Shieldred or Vorniclex. When in reality, you really just want to pitch stuff like uh, Jinka Taxis or Con Sphinx Void Winner in the yard and really get them out as early as possible. Because often there's really no reason to reanimate a Shieldred when you have a Jinka Taxis or a Con Sphinx in the yard. So. Excellent. Um, so what are your other uh, commander decks? If people are interested in uh, seeing you do another deck tech, sure. what are some of the options of uh, some of the decks that you've got? Uh, sure. I have uh, Sylvala, Mono Green, so it focuses on... a uh, cheating in big giant creatures uh, like turn two or three, like Emrakul, Ulamog, and just combo out using either um, Great Oak Guardian or Tooth and Nail Antics. Mm -hmm. I have Gave, which uses zero things with plus one, plus one counters. It's actually an Enchantress deck that people usually don't see coming until they have no permanence. That's pretty funny. And finally, I have Freya, which is not a combo deck either. It actually doesn't have uh, the infinite combo decks that, uh, infinite combos that other decks have. No World Gorger anime dead, no, uh, Nim Death Mantle anymore. It's more of a hard control and then lock your opponents down and with Static Orb, Winch Orb effects, and then make them sad. Okay. And if people want to find more of your stuff, uh, where can they find you online? Uh, I go by Dies to Doomblade. I have a four, four something articles on MTG Salvation where you can look over all my decks and pretty much everything you need to know on why this is in there and why certain cards are not. Also, you can find lists on Topped Out with uh, links to my NTPG Salvation uh, mm -hmm. articles. And I also do articles on my own on my own blog where I talk about like optimal commander cards, optimizing kind of Tier 2 or Tier 3 decks. And, right, and you did yeah. some great survey stuff over uh, Best and Worst Planeswalkers. Yeah. Lots of great stuff. What's the name of that blog? Uh, Dice of Doomblade. Uh, blog Makes spot. sense. Yeah, excellent. I figured that... Well, Good thank you so much, David. I greatly appreciate you taking the time to yeah. uh, share a uh, competitive deck that may lose you some friends but win you some games. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, this is Sart doing a wrap-up here. That was uh, David, Dies to Doomblade. If you liked this video, please let me know. And if you'd like him to do another deck tech, leave a comment on what deck. He's very willing to do another one here for us. I'm doing a lot of videos here in the next few days. I'm traveling a lot. The production quality is going to be a little bit rougher on some of these because I am traveling, but I've just decided I need to get videos out there. I hope you guys appreciate them. Check out some of my other lists. If there's stuff that you want to see, 
see in future videos, definitely leave it in the comments. We've got a lot of videos here coming in the next 45 days. And until next time, choose the cards. Why?